Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dot to Dot. Boy, I can't believe it's been 10 years. 10 seasons have been just wrapped up on the Oak Island, Curse of Oak Island TV show. And uh, they're back on the island now as we speak, as I speak, and they are continuing on with season 11. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I thought this season was uh, one of the most intriguing seasons that they've uh, done. Uh, they made a lot of really pretty astonishing uh, discoveries, especially on Lot 5, that really set the mind going, get the gears turning in your head. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do on Lot 5. Now, I was uh, surfing on the Oak Island, uh, the... The Quest of Oak Island webpage that is uh, sponsored by John Stemmer. And I ran across an article there that was very interesting or a contribution. And it has to do with Lot 5. Now here is the, uh, the ring of stones that is on Lot 5 that they were uncovering this year. And Laird is thinking this is some kind of a building foundation, but it's in a round structure. So uh, let me put this on slideshow so you can see it better. So this is, this is the structure on Lot 5. It's really about 100 feet from the shoreline. And uh, you can see that it has uh, sort of a concentric rings of stones that come around here. Now, when I was surfing on the uh, channel, uh, the Quest of Oak Island channel, uh, a lady who is a uh, top contributor to the channel, uh, Barbara Kopak, uh, basically made a very interesting observation about this being perhaps maybe some type of a kiln. Now, she says it may be a lime kiln. And uh, that could be possible. But if you notice, you look at the, 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 basically the shape. And this is a picture of, I guess, a Roman kiln uh, in Europe. And it looks pretty much the same similar shape. Now, I think Barbara Kopak was a uh, architect architectural artist, so... This is why she was uh, able to look at the spatial uh, design of this and make this, uh, basically this conclusion that this may be something of this nature. So I went on to go and research this. And here's, here's the shape. You can see that this is what pretty much I think gave her the idea that it may be a kiln. And notice that it's going out out here uh, and it's going to continue and there's more that is out there and I'll show you in a minute why this may be. See here's a picture of the, uh, the site and here's the ring right here and notice that it's filled with rubble. Now uh, this could be you know that it's part of the foundation but <clears throat> it's similar to the stone wall over on lot 26, but it could be just they filled it in with rubble. Uh, if they were tunneling on Oak Island, maybe they had a lot of this rubble around and they were probably just looking for any place to put it after the project was finished. And notice how far back it goes out here. So here's another picture of that uh the Roman kiln right here. Notice that the, it's there's a lot of small rocks that are along the thing, and it almost has these same concentric type rings that are uh, pretty much the same as we see on Oak Island. Now, if this is a kiln, it could be of this type, and this would be where the area is uh, that they're excavating now. Now, if you remember, uh, in one of the episodes, one of the last episodes of Curse of Oak Island, they were pounding on a rock that was at the bottom of the pit, and it sounded hollow. 
well, maybe this is, they haven't got that far yet. And uh, it could be that their, their rate in this area of where the wear chamber is, and perhaps underneath those rocks that sounded hollow will be where the firebox. Now, the way this works is, you know, you have a person who comes in here and keeps this fire going. And then these rocks are situated in such a way that it allows the heat to go up into this chamber. Now, how the temporary dome was built, I don't know. So it may have been rocks or it must have been something, but this is something that I, I really don't have any idea how they would. But it looks like it could be something like that. Now, they did find uh, at, actually at the pine tar kiln on lot 15, and on the stone wall on lot 26. And here they actually found charcoal, small pieces of charcoal. So that's indication that there was fire there. <clears throat> but they also found a piece of pottery here. And that gives me an idea of what it perhaps is. But one of the things about constructions of a kiln is the location of a kiln. And uh, the most important prerequisite is the construction is away from the settlement so the smoke won't disturb the people. So it's not going to be right on top or right near where a lot of activity is going on. Let's say that they're tunneling or building something. It's not going to be near that area. It's going to be away. And another impo equally important criteria, it is close to fuel, which it would be wood. Well, the whole, so there's a lot of wood there and water. So required to dilute the clay. So this is something that is uh, basically giving us the conditions of a, where they would construct a kiln. And it pretty much fits the criteria on lot five. Uh, here's some down here is some of the types of constructions, uh, these kilns that they found in Europe. This is of the University of York, and they found a lot of these kilns, and they go way back to Roman days. So it's a, not a new technology. So you can see here's the kiln on lot five, and you can see how close it is to the ocean. And uh, by the way, these uh, photos are from uh, the Muon drone that is uh, on, uh, used for the Quest of Oak Island Facebook page with John Stemmer. I'll leave a link in the descriptions if you guys want to go and support that channel. It's very informative. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, let's see. So this is where it is. And <clears throat> this is what possibly I think maybe being used, what if it is a kiln, what it might be used for, uh, is making pipe. Now we, in the vault theory, there is, or even on uh, Zena Halperin's map, there is the flood tunnel system uh, because we have the valve and the hole under the trap door, and we've seen that that's part of a flood tunnel system. So perhaps, and I'd have to really run this by Olivier from Oak Island Research, perhaps the tunnels that are being built underneath the ground are utilizing maybe some pipes to facilitate this flood, this basically hydraulic system. Because in the vault theory, it's not a flood tunnel system or a booby trap kind of thing. It's actually the hydraulic system that lifts the vault lowers the vault so that you can enter and exit the vault. So this, uh, this would be interesting because if the water was just flowing through tunnels and there's various types of uh, set of, uh, rock underneath the island, some would be very uh, conducive to just having a bare flood tunnel system, but some parts may not be conducive to where it would erode, maybe cave in if there was uh, water flowing through it. So perhaps they decided that they were going to use pipes. Now, this is a, 
ancient technology goes way back. And uh, this is actually one from the Roman period. So, uh, it, you know, the way they make clay pipes is uh, they can form them around a wo wooden form, uh, but it's difficult to form a seam. And so what they may have done is they may have used a potter's wheel. And these, this is an old technology, it goes back to ancient Sumeria, about 3,500 3, B.C. Um, and then the other part is the glazing. Now, glazing is where you add uh, one of the most common and easiest method is salt or sodium. You use salt or lead or tin, which came later. And this puts a protective coating and it keeps the pipe uh, water so the water won't penetrate into the clay and deteriorate the uh, ceramic. So it's an important part. Uh, these studies here have not really seen, it's very rarely mentioned in the text about how the glazing was done. But I have an idea here that is interesting, is that <clears throat> I looked up this. What if you used ocean water and mixed it in with the clay? And here we have this guy who's a pottery uh, teacher for 50 years and he says that if you have lot if you use salt water or ocean water it will have lots of salts and it will actually form a uh, a bloom on the uh, surface and then when you put it in the kiln it will actually form a salt glaze and the the salt glazes are very attractive, but this is pipe, but it has sort of an orange peel texture. And the temperatures that need to get up here would be 1100, 1200 uh, degrees centigrade. And this is capable of in these kilns, the ones that I showed you, the basically the dome where it has a dome on it. It'd have to be a closed kiln and very hot with a fire pit underneath. So the glazing, like I said before, the glazing makes uh, the pipe impermeable to water and it also gives it a tougher surface. So here's a picture of Laird holding a piece of ceramic that was found uh, at the site. And notice that it has a glaze on the outside. Now, Laird said that this was from the early 1700s, uh, and perhaps it is. I don't know. Uh, but it could be possible that this was part of a pipe. Now, it has sort of a ridge here, and you would think, well, a pipe would be straight. But it's not. It's not necessarily true that it would be straight. Now, the radius of this looks like it may be part of something that may be, I don't know, maybe 14 or uh, 12 inches in diameter. But could this be possibly a piece of pipe that they were building? It's, some, it's a type of uh, ceramic that they have not seen on the island yet. It's the red type. And this is the type of... Uh, the red ware, and this is actually early Roman period uh, pottery, and it has a salt glaze on it. So I put this in here to show you that you have, uh, this is the style of clay or the type of clay that may have been used on Oak Island because they have a lot of red clay on Oak Island. We've seen that when they were digging into the money pit. So these are the types of joints that the Romans would use. And this is, I put this in here so that you can see that this is very um, high tech. This is high tech. And this is during the Roman period and Greek period. This is 1600 BC here. But uh, because that piece that Laird had in his hand had some kind of a flange to it, it could be possible that it's some type, one of these type of joints that would be uh, part of that piece of ceramic. So here's 
uh, this is, I don't know where this is, but this is a picture showing how the pipe is laid underground. This is an excavation. And this is a Roman period uh, pipeline. And notice you can have more than just one pipe. So you can have several uh, pipes running. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, one big, huge pipe. It could be several uh, smaller ones that are coming and to provide as much water or water pressure that you would uh, need. So, <laughs> I mean... It is far out, and I'm not really saying that uh, that this is what it is. It's just all speculation, as we know has to be done with Oak Island on a lot of things. But uh, Barbara Kopak uh, got my imagination going, and I thought, hey, well, maybe that is what it is The on the circle of rocks here. It could be a kiln. And if... If that's true, we already have another kiln over here, the pine tar kiln, that is uh, on lot 15. Now, this is of a different style. It was more rectangular, but perhaps this was to make longer, straighter pieces of pipe. And I won't, uh, I won't discard even the stone wall because the stone wall is something that doesn't really contain anything. It's not really a wall, but it was filled with debris, just like the circle of rocks. But they did find some charcoal underneath there, if you remember. And it was during the period, I think they did the period of around 1400s. So, you know, in this uh, episode of Oak Island, uh, they, or this season of Oak Island, they really uh, drove home the Templar and also the different ages of when this might have been. Uh, we had the uh, Nolan's Cross being dated at 1200, and we had the Old Well dated at 1200. And perhaps that was the time that this was laid down, uh, the Nolan's Cross, but none of this digging was done. And maybe perhaps in the 1300s or the 1400s, they were doing all this kind of work. And I don't think it must, I don't think it would have gone later than 1530. Uh, okay, let's, I got another thing for you. Let's go here to, here's the artifact map. Now, another uh, interesting find I think they found this year was the staple and this is at the great quadrilateral now this staple is very interesting because i did some research on old staples now i don't know how uh long these how how what kind of period how far they were used but i know that they were the, and just recently they just found that they were used in a very interesting place, and it was surprising. And let me bring up the, they found the staples in the Notre Dame Cathedral. Now we know that the Notre Dame Cathedral was built by stonemasons, that a lot of them were most likely crusaders or Templars at one time. But they found that, and it's a new thing. This is uh, just going on since 2019 and is still going on today. They're studying these staples that they have found that are holding and binding the stones together. And they analyzed the staples. And they were used in the earliest phases of construction of Notre Dame in the 1160s. So they were used in 1160. So another thing, another place that they found staples was in the castle of Belvoir. And this is in Jerusalem. This is in Israel. I'm sorry, not maybe not Jerusalem, but Israel. And it was built by the hospitalers of St. John. 
So the Hospitallers is a group that is pretty similar. It actually came before the Knights Templar. And uh, they were the ones that erected this. And they are finding, uh, I think it was in 2013, they were finding staples. They were using iron. Several of these staples were at uh, the levels of the arrow slits. And they have a whole big study here of where they found the staples. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description for both these articles. But it's interesting. I really enjoyed this season. They had a lot of different things uh, that came up and a lot of emphasis on the Templars and the Xena Hopper map. Well, if you like this, like and subscribe, and I'll be uh, doing more videos uh, and Thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you later.